Cindy. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for sitting down with us at the Music Lounge today. I'm excited to talk more with you about kind of what you've been doing in the music scene and where your career is going and taking off too. It's been some pretty cool things for me the last year. Thanks. Several years ago, previously, you were on a record label and I know you took a departure from that to be an independent artist. What uh, stirred you to go that direction? Well, I'm a really ambitious person by nature, I guess, and I, I could see what um, the staff at the label was doing and I thought to myself, I could do that, you know? Like, there's no reason why I can't be doing those jobs. And in fact, I felt like I was doing a lot of those jobs. Um, and so I just thought, I've been watching this long enough that I could just take it in my own hands and try it on my own. Plus, I had started out with a, doing faith-based music and I didn't want to um, make that kind of music for my whole life long. And so I had other songs that I was writing and that I wanted to release. And so I just thought, you know what, it's time for me to do my own thing and right. stop singing <laughs> other people's songs. Because I was, I was writing some of my songs, but singing songs that other people had written. And I had my own messages that I wanted to share. So um, I had kind of already started my next project with that label, but I bought that project back with my own money because it's a risky I move. <laughs> yeah I wanted to own my own work and I got out and just went independent and recorded my next album on my own. That's so. excellent. <laughs> now the first the first project on your own like it was that a learning curve project for you or did you were you able to find some success with it? No, yeah, it was total learning curve. I feel like I'm I'm always on the learning curve, but <laughs> <That's cool>. um, <laughs> it was though I. Um, Again, like I said, I was writing new material, um, different themes, and a different feel of music. It was more of an, like an indie rock feel, um, and it was really exciting, but yeah, definitely a learning curve. And do you feel like, now that Anchor is out, do you feel like that, I mean, every artist, of course, has higher projections they want to achieve down the road, but do you feel like this is the gateway to like your future at this point? Yes, I feel like that first album that I made on my own, it was called Feather in the Wind. It was, and it's really, I mean, it has a lot of sentimental value for me because it was my first project that I did on my own, but um, it was experimental and I learned a lot with it. So the next project, Anchor, I had some goals with it that were pretty lofty. I wanted to try to acquire a producer um, that was difficult to get and but I'm so glad that I did it and yeah. so yeah it was did do that yeah I did do that I I looked at like the music that I was listening to and I thought okay what's my favorite music and who's producing it so I wrote down the names of the producers and there were three like main producers that I was really liking and I contacted each of them and I got a response from all of them wow that's that alone is <laughs> I know you I got thought a response it, I, know. Anything. <laughs> I thought it was so um and two out of the three agreed like to work with me and um, it wasn't like it was super easy to get them to agree at first but it took some you know time to build a relationship and to earn their trust and um, so I finally ended up going with one his name is Stuart Brawley and he had produced um, the single for Lanka in 2008 it was called the show and I really loved her music and just felt like yeah that's the that's the kind of thing that I feel like is authentic to me and that I want to be doing and so and he's he's a well-known producer for a lot of different artists isn't yeah he? he's pretty he's really versatile he's worked on Michael Jackson's music and oh, he's wow. worked with Celine Dion and he's worked with <laughs> Blanca and Brandy yeah. and different yeah lots of different styles of music but I really liked his indie stuff that he was kind of style that he was doing well and I think I think maybe a lot of independent artists don't realize that they have the ability to do that if they just it's kind of just in taking the risk in the communication to reach out and kind of yeah. just getting to know people it doesn't mean since you're not on a record label you can't work with the producers you want to work with and yeah I think we all make up stories that prevent us from moving on and succeeding in what we really want to do. We make up these stories sure. like, well, they're going to never answer my email. <laughs> Why not at least you try? Never know. You yeah, never know. you never know. And so, yeah. yeah, and I just think we have all these kind of crazy stories in our minds about why we can't succeed, and it prevents us from doing those things. So, yeah. I mean, when it comes down to it, as much as you want to make music, the producers want to make music too. Exactly. So they're looking, they're yeah. looking for the opportunities. And That's this cool. business is changing so much right now, Every day. so fast. <laughs> I mean, there are producers who have worked with major labels and major artists who are looking for work right now. I mean, mm -hmm. the, it's just, labels are 
not what they used to be and there's not as many and so there are so many talented producers out there and musicians that are looking for work and that could make some amazing albums. Oh so, yeah. yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I'm gonna walk a hundred miles I'm gonna whistle all the while If that's what it takes to make me smile I'm gonna walk a hundred miles so you mentioned that social media, you have, you know, you believe in being as active in as many resources of that as possible. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how that has like played a part in, into like having a strong presence as an artist right now. I think for an independent artist um, and for any kind of artist, it's just so important. It's maybe just number one. Your presence online is really important. So that's where people are existing yeah. right now. A and lot, so. it's free. And so with people who have a limited budget and a lot of independent artists do, mm -hmm. I mean, it is just so important to establish those things. So I think the the biggest two are Twitter and Facebook, your, your Facebook fan page. Um, are really important, but I mean, there's lots of other things that you can be doing online. I think it's important too to have your website be something that's not um, stagnant, like that doesn't sit there. You have to always have like new things that you're updating on your website, whether it's just your new shows, like a section where you have news and new things that are happening there. Mm -hmm. um, the internet now is just something where you have to have content that can change frequently and not just sit there. Now, uh, as far as social media goes, I know that YouTube is another big part of those outlets. How, how have you made use of yeah. that? Um, well, that has been a really big thing for me this last year and a half since releasing Anchor. I, I have so much fun doing music videos, and so I've released a couple music videos and have collaborated with some different directors. And I just think when people can see um, an image and put it with your music. It's a lot more memorable and powerful for them. Absolutely. Um, and so I've released some of those things and also um, on YouTube there are people who are just dying to get your music in their videos. And so what happens is when somebody like asks you to license or if you just want to give them permission, you know, to use your music in their video, they'll link back to your music videos or to your website, and so you get more and more subscribers. So that's something that's been really great for me, um, is to establish relationships with YouTube personalities. Um, and so I've gotten, uh, my music video for Anchor has over 700,000 views, which for an independent artist like me, I'm, I'm thrilled with that, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's peanuts for like a major label <laughs> artist, but for me, it's great. And yeah, um, yeah my, my channel has gotten like, over one and a half million views since I released that album. Wow. So those are just, you know, people that are experience your, experiencing your music for the first time maybe, and it's just so powerful. So YouTube is big, and it doesn't, you don't have to make like these super expensive productions. I mean, people just want to see you and want to connect with you. Yeah, I think, I think maybe people put too much emphasis on what it takes. Not that you should necessarily be shooting all your music videos with your iPhone, but no, <laughs> you know, like, it, like, yeah. what would you say? There's, there's a good worth in investing in. Yeah, I've putting I've, a little more elbow grease into. Yeah, I'll just or tell a few you. More dollars. Yeah, some of my live like music videos, I've spent you know like less than five hundred bucks on, mm -hmm. and that's that's really good. I mean, that's that's a good deal. Yeah. For making a, a professional <laughs> but you, live. But you did spend something. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. I think people can't expect to do everything for free in their career. You right. need to invest some money into yourself, you know? Right. Um, but that, I mean, all any money that I've ever spent on a music video has paid for itself and more. So I think it's Advertising think it's and powerful. views, it yeah. works out. <laughs> been working recently with Cascade who is you know a renowned artist and you know there's a lot of connections to some really incredible musicians and you have been a voice on a lot of his tracks lately that have been top charting and <laughs> earning him huge awards on his albums and things like that what uh, how did that come about for you um you know it's funny um one of his producers um Finn Bjarnson I actually Finn. <laughs> yeah he's so great I I went to Finn when I was releasing my very first independent album, Feather in the Wind, just to see um, if he would be interested in working on it. And 
He wasn't in a place. Was he one of those three producers <laughs> there? No, he wasn't. That was for Anchor. Yeah. Okay. This was the first time. Okay. I went and talked to him, and um, you know, it it just it just wasn't working. Like our, it wasn't a match, and he just felt like it wasn't the right timing, the right thing for him. It just it just wasn't right. So like years later, um, I had worked with one of Cascade's other producers, John Hancock. And he brought up to Finn one day, he said, what, what if we use this girl? What if we use Mindy Gledhill for... <laughs> and he was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she's the right person. And he said, well, let's just give her a try. So I went in and um, I recorded a track called All That You Give, which was on his Dynasty album. Yes. And it was just such a fun experience. And after I recorded the first track, um, my first take, Finn said, you have made me so happy. <laughs> it was, it was awesome. So I was, I was happy because I, told him so. <laughs> I've been wanting to work with him for years, and yeah. so I think that's a good lesson to to teach some some of us that, you know, maybe the first time it won't work out with somebody, or people might tell you no. Sure. You know, and that doesn't mean that it's not going to work out later, or it might send you on the right path to where you need to be. So. Well, I think maybe maybe just being on the path of being an artist is constantly progressing or constantly evolving and changing and you just kind of ended up being in the right place and mm -hmm. finally yeah. being, you know, timing is everything needed. sometimes. So the timing was just right that time and yeah. Um, it's been really fun to be a guest artist on his music because it's so different from my music. I it's mean, so it's cool dance to see music. your name up there. I mean, you just, it's not something I would think first, oh, this is a mini Gledhill song, you know? <laughs> it's not your brand and your identity, and yet you, feel, you fit so well into it. Thank you. And, yeah. Now, when, uh, in, ref in uh, reference to licensing and things like that, um, you know, we've, we've talked about, like, maybe with some other artists and how to do licensing, how to get into that. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of people just recommended like between going to workshops and just talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's like fruitful for people to attend those kind of things? Yeah. I mean, people ask me all the time, what advice would I give like a, an independent artist who's just starting out? And the number one thing I always say is go to workshops. There's Taxi. I've been to Taxi in LA. Um, their Road Rally is just a great resource, and I've been to um, Durango Songwriter Expo. I mean, there are so many resources there, and that's where you network with people and make your relationships in business. And I honestly can tell you, every workshop that I've ever been to has led to revenue, like has led to income for me through contacts that I've met. That's cool. And so, especially in the TV film, um, area so as far as and, licensing your mm -hmm, music for licensing use? your music yeah so I think any licensing that I've ever done like in some way has come through meeting someone at a workshop that I've been to oh cool and I yeah. I recently signed a co-publishing deal with a company called position music um, which is a fabulous company that they license music to feature films you know and to advertisements and um, and movie trailers and things like that. And that came through going to Taxi. There's also another organization called the Soundcheck Series who has sponsored me before and they sent me to um, a TV film expo through Durango last year cool. that led to Anchor being licensed on Bones on Fox. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and so that's a really great resource too, soundcheckseries.com. And I know that they're going to be, if not already, they have um, some of their workshops online, so you don't have to be local to go. But well, thanks for your time today. Really yeah. appreciate you sharing your experiences <laughs> and your stories. And um, is there anything that you want to? Is there any like specific website information you can leave us with this refer people to? So people can go to MindyGledhill.com to find out when I'm touring and any kind of updates on what's going on in my life. And then I have a blog, like you mentioned. It's just MindyGledhill.blogspot. Dot com and then I'm on Twitter at Mindy Gledhill and Facebook. Yeah, well, so always a days remember your name. We'll find <laughs> you everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All about your heart. Are we good? Are you good? <laughs>